Hey guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach, and today's video is very, very important. We're going to be talking about digitizing your pet's medical records. Really quick before we get started though, I do want to say thank you for being here. If you are already subscribed to my channel, thank you so much for revisiting. If you are new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps grow my channel, and I really appreciate you being here as well. So let's get right into this video. It is such an important video because we're talking about about taking our pet's medical records and putting them in the cloud, on the computer, somehow, some way. And I'm going to go over a few different steps and strategies you can do to get this accomplished. So first and foremost, what do you need to do? You need to have your pet's medical records. So if you are like many people, you may have stacks and stacks of paper in your home and somewhere in those stacks of paper, you probably have receipts from your veterinarian's office from where you took your pet to have some sort of service done, whether it was a vaccination or a titer test or maybe just a well visit. There are so many things that you could be taking your pet to the vet for and you want to have all of those records. Why? Why do you want to have all of those records and why do you need them handy and all in one spot? There are so many different reasons, but one in case of an emergency. So if you have to evacuate or if your dog or cat somehow manages to become desperately ill and you have to go to an emergency veterinarian, um, an emergency vet clinic, you need to have your pet's records so they know the history of your pet. If you move and you need to find a new veterinarian and that vet will need all of the records, all of your past records from whatever veterinarian you were visiting previously so they can get up to date on your pet's health records so they can better treat your pet. Now, if you don't have all of your pet's medical records, don't worry, you can get them. And this might actually make things easier for you if you choose to contact your veterinarian directly and say, hey, can you email me all of my pet's records because I know I need them and for some reason I don't have them. That actually will make things easier for you because then you already have a digital file that you can take and upload to a cloud server somewhere. And we're going to talk about where to put your pet's records here in just a minute, so stick with me. Once you have all of your pet's medical records, the next thing you want to do is choose where to put them. Now me personally, I actually, this is one of the very few things that I I have decided I want to not only have in the cloud and I want to have digital records for my pet, but I also want to keep paper copies, especially of the most important documents for any sort of emergency situation. Like if we did have to evacuate, we used to live on the East Coast where hurricanes had their own season and we never knew if we were going to have to evacuate because you never know when a hurricane is coming. I'm very cautious because most of my life I lived that way. So I have paper copies of my pet's medical records and literally I have been <laughs> wanting to digitize them for years. And now that we are all social distancing because of what's currently going on, I have found that this is going to be a perfect time for me to take my whole house paperless and digitize digitizing my pet records are one of the things I'm going to be doing. So now that you have your pet's records, the next thing you want to do is choose where you want to keep them on the cloud. For me, I've chosen Google Drive, but there are a number of different places you can do this. There are a bunch of different apps that you can choose. You can actually scan and upload them onto different apps. I have chosen not to go that route because I don't always know if I'm going to have that app. I don't know that that app is always going to be around and I don't know the developers of that app. There are probably a lot of things that I'm agreeing to with that application on my phone that maybe, I don't know, maybe I just don't trust it. Maybe you do and that is totally fine. As a matter of fact, if you have an app that you do store your pet's records on or that you're considering storing your pet's pets records on, post it below in the comments. I'd love to know about it. I'd love to hear about it. And uh, maybe I will consider it on down the road. But for me right now, I'm going to be using Google Drive. You can also use services like Dropbox or if you use a PC instead of a Mac, which I use a Mac. If you have a PC instead, you can use um, Microsoft 
I believe it's Microsoft One Box, and that may be the best solution for you. There are a bunch of different options out there. Choose the one that is going to work best for you. The third step is to scan. Scan your documents. And this is actually a pretty easy step, but you want to plan it out. So maybe you have a scanner, maybe you have a multifunction, like all-in-one printer, scanner, fax machine, and that's cool. You can scan directly to your computer that way. For me, I actually choose an app on my phone. Another place you can store documents, and I'm actually considering storing my documents in Drive, but also in Evernote. I already have Evernote and I love it. And one of the really cool features about Evernote is that you can actually tag different items with different things. And you can, so for instance, if I'm uploading a rabies certificate, I can tag it rabies. And that way I can search in Evernote and just type in rabies and it's going to pull up everything with that tag. It can actually read the documents that you're scanning. So maybe you're scanning in a document that says Sammy and you type in Sammy Sammy and search in Evernote and it will pull up all the documents that contain the word Sammy in them. So it's a really cool application. To do the search feature in the document, you do have to pay for the subscription. So you really want to take that into consideration. But if you already pay for the subscription of Evernote, that's really going to be a really awesome place for you to store your pet's medical records as well. So when you're choosing how to scan in your documents, I actually use my phone and I use an application called Scannable. I love Scannable. It is so easy. You actually just take your phone and hold the camera over whatever you're trying to scan and it scans it and turns it into a PDF document. You can name it whatever you want. And then for me, I just airdrop it to my computer and upload it into Google Drive. It is that simple. Your fourth step is to then shred everything. Now for your pet's medical records, for me, again, I'm also going to be keeping the paper copies just in case of an emergency. I actually have a go bag that has all of my pet's medical records in them. I have had this bag for many, many years. It only has my pet medical records in it. And I know that this is in the closet with my carriers ready to go if we have to leave and evacuate. The fifth and final step is to have a system in place for papers coming into your home. Now, one thing you could do if you decide you don't want to have papers at all in your home is to actually, when you're at the veterinarian's office and you're checking out, say, hey, can you email me the receipt instead of printing it out? Win-win, right? Because you're reducing your carbon footprint print, you are not even using that paper to begin with, and you get an emailed copy, you can come home, download it on your computer, name it whatever you want, upload it into whatever cloud system you have chosen, and voila, you're done. One thing I do want to mention is that when I'm scanning in my documents, I am very intentional about how I am naming my documents. So for my pet records, I'm going to start with the name of my pet, and then the date that my pet went to the veterinarian and then a brief description of why. So maybe it's a rabies certificate or maybe it's a titer test or maybe they had an ear infection or maybe it was just a well visit. Whatever it is, choose a naming system and stick with it. It will make your life so much easier in the long run. So that's it. I hope you're going to be digitizing your pet's medical records as well. If you are, please leave a comment below. Or if you're not, leave a comment below for that as well. I'd love to hear your rationale as to why you are going to be digitizing your records or why you're not going to be digitizing your records. Maybe you're going to digitize and also keep the paper copies like me because I'm a bit of an insane person and I am totally OCD when it comes to my pets and I feel like I can never prepare enough when it comes to my pets. So I am going to have both, but maybe you're like, I'm cool, I got this. Maybe you're one of those people that has just stacks and stacks of paper everywhere and you have to be going searching for the records anyway, then you're gonna be like, heck yeah, just get all the paper out of my house good for you. I applaud you because that is my goal this year as well. Get as much paper out of my house as possible. And yeah, thank you so much for being with me today. I really hope you like this video. If you do, please give it a big thumbs up. 
Again, if you are not already subscribed, why not? Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can join the family. Once you hit the subscribe button, make sure a bell will pop up. Make sure you click the bell and check all notifications. That way you never miss another video. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate you and I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.